My guest says, and I'm quoting, people don't realize that a trap has been set for us by the World Health Organization. If passed in their current state, the two proposed agreements currently being negotiated would establish an international totalitarian biotech surveillance state. Our Senate will not stop this. They have already voted not to require their advice and consent on the proposed WHO agreements. If the mandatory vaccine passports currently being pushed by the WHO are combined with a central bank digital currency, we will be trapped in a digital gulag from which there will be no escape. The time to resist is now while we still can, end of quote. My guest is founder and president of Women's Rights Without Frontiers, an international coalition that opposes forced abortion and sexual slavery in China. Please welcome Reggie Littleton. Reggie, as always, thank you for coming on. Digital Gulag, talk to us. So what I mean by the digital gulag, Larry, is that we will be enslaved, entrapped in a gulag that's not a physical gulag like what the Gulag Archipelago was in the former Soviet Union, but digitally trapped in a way that would utterly paralyze us. And the way it would work is this. The World Health Organization is, is currently negotiating two instruments that taken together would destroy our national sovereignty and our personal medical freedom, meaning that if these, if these are passed, the World Health Organization, number one, will move from being an advisory body to being a regulatory body that will be able to come to any country, including the United States, if we have any kind of a health risk and basically tell us how to handle it. And they will have the power to, to mandate things like even mandatory vaccines. So that would, number one, abrogate our national sovereignty because we will have a foreign um, globalist organization telling us how to handle our own health care. And then number two, it would also destroy our personal medical in in, um, integrity and independence because uh, we, our doctor will no longer be able to decide with us what is the best approach to a health issue. The World Health Organization will. The World Health Organization, of course, is heavily influenced by the Chinese Communist Party. So it would be like having Xi Jinping sitting in your doctor's office with you, deciding what your health care is going to be. Now, when you say that the Senate won't do anything about it, what do you mean by that? Okay, so Senator Ron Johnson, a, a few weeks ago now, submitted an amendment to the United States Senate saying any agreement, any treaty that's passed by the World Health Organization under the U.S. Constitution needs to be needs to be passed with the advice and, sent, um, and consent of the Senate. And the Senate voted it down. And the vote went straight down party lines. So Senator Johnson tweeted, it is really sad to see that the Democrat Party doesn't care about our national sovereignty. That's number one, that they, ha and, I, and I believe that every one of those senators that said that they would not obey the constitution, that said that they would just not want to consider a treaty that would so directly impinge our national sovereignty, they should be held accountable for that. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. number one. But then I want to tell you something else, Larry, Something that most people don't know that, that I really am trying to raise a vis visibility about is that on December 23rd of 2022, the U.S. Congress passed the NDAA, the National Defense Authorization Act, which we, they needed to in order to authorize our defense, right? That act was 1,722 pages long. And so basically nobody read it. So they had nobody very read it, right. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and on page 950 of that, was something called the International Pandemic Preparedness Act of 2022. And that act obligates the United States to comply with basically anything that is passed by the World Health Organization. So it's, it's so the, they can argue, well, it's already passed the Senate because the Senate passed the NDAA. Got a question for you. Are you concerned with stock market volatility? markets closing in on their worst year since the financial crisis. Since 2020, the Dow closed down more than 1,100 points. Financial markets had their worst day since the start of the pandemic. Do you really trust this economy? The U.S. economy could be headed for a recession. 
tonight the alarming spike in inflation soaring to its highest level in nearly 40 years. What if you can invest in a portfolio with a high fixed rate of return that's not correlated to the stock market? Well, you can turn your monthly income on or off, compound it, whatever you choose, and get this, there is no loss of principal if you need your money back and absolutely no fees. Just log on to investyrefi.com. Folks, I personally invest with my own money with Y-Refi. So log on to investyrefi.com or call 888-Y-REFI-24. That's 888-Y-REFI-24. Now talk to me about this digital global currency. Okay, so there's a central bank digital currency movement that is worldwide. Right. And it's not just in the United States. I mean, there are a number of countries in the world that have already implemented it. It's in development in the United States. So central bank digital currency is the opposite of Bitcoin, which is decentralized. It's done through the central bank. So in the United States, it would be the Federal Reserve. And what it means is that if we were to implement this, the, the, all of our money would go through the Federal Reserve, which mean that, means that the Federal Reserve would know every single transaction that we have. And also these central bank digital currencies, so, so, I mean, so that's the end of, of privacy, any kind of financial privacy from between you and the government. OK, that's number one. And number two, these um, central bank digital currencies are programmable. Which means that they that 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 the, the Federal Reserve or the government will decide what you can spend your money on, how much you can spend, um, and whether you can spend it at all. So the way this fits in with the, with the World Health Organization and the digital gulag is if, for example, they decide the World Health Organization decides that vaccines are going to be required for whatever this next pandemic is going to be, it can be enforced through a central bank digital currency so that if you are not vaccinated, they can say, guess what? You can't use your money. We are severing you from your credit cards and your bank account until you get yourself vaccinated. That's an example of what could happen. And that's an example of a digital gulag. Uh, I'm not hearing very much about this. I watch a lot of TV. I watch a lot of news. And I'm not hearing very many people talk about this. Larry, you know, God bless you for having me on. And... The mainstream media is 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 just not is not covering this. They're absolutely not covering this. But we have started something called the Sovereignty Coalition, and um, we had a launch last week. And we have people on board with us, like the Dr. Peter McCullough, Michelle Bachman, Eric Metaxas, Dr. Naomi Wolf, all together of uh, Dr. Lee Valit, Elizabeth Lee Valit. Um, all together are, are sounding the alarm about this. And we have had 200,000 actions taken on our campaign. So a, ma a major um, effort has gone out to alert Congress to this, because I think that, that people don't know and Congress doesn't know that this is happening. It's all being done very quietly behind the scenes. If people want to get involved in the Sovereignty Coalition, how do they do it? So the, the website is SovereigntyCoalition.org, SovereigntyCoalition.org. Please go on and sign our declaration. Um, and then when you do that, you can also reach out to your um, congressmen and your senators and, and alert them to the imminent danger that we are in if we don't stop this. Reggie Littlejohn, thank you for coming on. This is scary stuff. Thank you. Appreciate it. God bless. Thank you so much. God bless. Now, I know you like the show, so please hit that like button and also hit that subscribe button. We want to get our subscriptions up and scroll down a little bit and get on our mailing list. Why? Because every now and then, for reasons that confound us, YouTube has issues with our videos. To make sure you don't miss a single video, get on our mailing list. Also, see that donate button? Hit that. Throw a little something in the tip jar. Make sure we can, can still give you hard-hitting, candid, honest programming. Remember... Larry with Epic.com, Larry with E P O C H.com. I'm Larry Elder, and this has been the Larry Elder Show for Epic Times. Remember, we've got a country to say. <laughs> See you next time.